Hello painters, it's Debbie from acrylicpouring.com back today with some luscious colours. I'm going to work with these colour shift paints today. These are by Folk Art and I bought them on my recent shopping trip over to the US so I'm very excited to try them out. I have previously used the uh, Purple Flash in an earlier pour and it turned out absolutely beautifully. I was so delighted with it but it was only one colour shift paint in a flip cup. So today I'm going to try four colour shift paints plus black. So we will see what's going to happen. I am using this one which is pink flash and it kind of goes between, well when I've mixed it it looks kind of pink to orange. Then I've got the purple flash which I know from before goes a, a very vivid kind of blue to purple. Then this one is aqua flash and I'm thinking it's probably going to be kind of green and yellow, but I'm not really sure. We'll see. And then this one is green flash. And again, I don't know what colours this one will go, but we will no doubt find out when we put it in our pour. So I've mixed all of these with 50% um, paint and 50% Floetrol and just a few drops of water to hopefully get them to the right pouring consistency. So these all look very good. And then I'm going to mix them with my Blick Student Acrylic Mars Black paint and I thought I would do a flip cup and see what happens. So anytime you use black it's always a little bit of a gamble because you don't know how it's going to react with the other paints. Will the other paints come up through and be really vibrant and bright or will the black just take over and you'll get a lot of black and not much else. So it's a bit of a gamble. So I've mixed them 50-50 with the Flood Flow Draw and I've also added a few drops of the Dimethicone from this Coconut Milk Hair Serum. I've only added it to the black today. So I'm carrying out a bit of an experiment. What will happen if I only add the Dimethicone to one colour, plus I've got all these glorious colour shifts and a lot of black. So let me clear the space. We'll start setting up the flip cup and we'll see what's going to happen. So I thought what I would do today, instead of mixing these, these paints up a lot in the cup, I want the, the colours to stay distinct if possible in my flip cup when I turn it up without too much um, mixing up. So what I'm going to do is just add a layer of black in there and then, actually that black's quite thin, we'll see what happens with that, and then I'm going to layer these up but kind of gently and put the whole colour in at once because I don't want them to mix too much. I think by putting them the whole lot in at once, hopefully I'll achieve that. So that's that nice pinky one. What was that one called? Oh, well, unsurprisingly, that's called Pink Flash. I should have thought about that, shouldn't I? Okay, let's get that one in there. And I think you can see in here if you can um, look in the cup. It's already kind of pink, kind of orange, kind of salmon. There's a lot already going on in there just with that one colour of paint, which is why, because it has so many colours, I don't want to mix them too much. I just want to keep them as they are. So what do we go next? Let's do this, uh, this one, which was the Aqua Flash. So I'm going to try and put it in reasonably carefully so that it sits a little bit on top of that other colour without too much mixing. There we go. Very nice aqua flash. I like you a lot. There we go, that's that one. And then we should go with the purple flash. In it goes. So in terms of how much volume I've got, I mixed about 10 grams of the paint with 10 grams of Floetrol for each one. Um, and then um, just a few drops of water, not even a gram probably, maybe a gram, I don't know. But it wasn't very much. Let's get that one in there. Lovely. And then this one, which is the lovely, lovely, limey, bright green flash pour that one on there. Now this one sits nicely on the top, that's good. So hopefully this will be nice and bright and distinct in with our colours. 
Now with this um, purple and the bright limey green, I do stand a bit of a danger that it's going to look kind of like Halloween <laughs> because that pink one is also a little bit orange. So I could end up with kind of a, a lime green, purple and orange which is and black, which is going to look very Halloween. Um, and if it does, well, we'll pretend that that was intentional and I'll keep the video back and post it in October, shall I? <laughs> you never know, do you? Okay, so let's now add the rest of my black in here. And I'm going to allow that to mix in a little bit and also allow a little bit to sit on the top and we will see what happens. Okay. So everything's in. I'm just going to do a flip cut. Okay. So that's a lot of black. It looks from the side of the cut that that's a lot of black. And it does look very Halloween-y with the purple and the lime green. Okay, so I'm going to let this just sit for a minute or two while I go make myself a cup of tea and then we'll come back for the big reveal. Okay, so let's flip this up now and see if we've got something that looks kind of cool or something that looks a bit like a Halloween nightmare. Let's take a look and see. Oh yeah, that's very purple and green. <laughs> oh my goodness. There goes my crazy colour choices again. I've created Halloween today. Oh well. Okay, I'm going to just pour a little bit out, fill in the corners here. It'll be interesting to see what happens with the black. So there was a lot of black in that cut, but it does look like the colours are, are showing more than the black, so that's good. Yeah, it doesn't look too bad. <laughs> what do you think? Not too bad, kind of purpley. Okay, so I haven't got, I've got some really big cells over here, but I've got a big patch of purple hill that doesn't have anything. So um, I don't normally torch my paintings, haven't done for a while, but because we've got this big patch and these great big cells, I think I'm gonna to torch a little bit in this purple area. Not much happening. The purple doesn't seem to like it in terms of making cells, but I've got lots in the other parts of the painting. You see, it looks really nice. So let's see what I can do to make something nice out of this. Wow, the colors look fabulous. Now I'm moving them around and I can see them in the light. Oh, I love these paints. I love them so much. But come on purple, do something for me. The other colours look so good. I need you to do something in the middle there. Okay. I think I may have made them a little bit too thin today. Probably with the flow trolls enough, they probably didn't need to have any water added to them. Let's see. Well, it doesn't look as Halloween-y as it might have done, so I think I've got away with that, at least. Let's see. Let's pour it off on this side, hopefully without getting too much up my wrist. I always seem to end up with a lot of paint on my wrist. Okay. And we're done. That's good. But now... I've got a whole lot of blank there, so let's see if I can move some of this more interesting area back into where the more plain area is. I should be able to stretch that out, I think. And while I'm doing that, I'm just filling a little bit on these corners. Oh, now that is looking good. Oh, that's nice. That's very nice. Okay, how do I like that? Everything seems to be covered. Well, that's kind of interesting. Hmm. I've still got some big areas here. Right, I'm going to go and wipe out my hands a minute, get rid of all this black, and we'll see if I can do anything else to this painting. Well, while I was off washing my hands, and I got a bit distracted, came back and the painting had actually changed quite a lot. Got a lot more uh, cells and things come through in that blank area, so it doesn't look as blank now. And I think, in fact, it's got a much nicer balance. 
So um, unfortunately there's not much of the turquoise, there's just this little bit here. Um, the, the pink, I can see, you know, little, little areas of the pink over here. There's quite a lot of black and purple and um, some very nice areas, this limey green, which looks almost uh, gold. Some really nice cells just here. So I think I'm very happy with it. After suddenly, after initially not being sure and thinking it might look like Halloween, I think now it looks pretty spectacular. I need to wait for it to dry, obviously, and I think when I do, the um, the colour shift paints are really going to come into their own. And I think this whole thing, when held up to the light, is going to be really pretty damn spectacular. So as usual, hold on because I'm going to dry this one off and varnish it and I'll show you what it looks like when it's finished and in the meantime I'm going to move this out of the way because I've got a lot of really great spill I'm going to make some nice dips with it so here it is finished and I have to say I'm absolutely delighted with it the colours in this are absolutely fabulous they're so vibrant so shiny and simmery, uh, shimmery and the way it changes when you look at it in the light these uh, colour shift paints really, really are very nice. It doesn't pick it up so well in the camera. I think you can probably see, you know, just quite how much this painting shines when you look at it at different air, different lights. But uh, yeah, it's really, really nice. So thank you very much for watching. This has been um, a pour with the colour shift paints, and I look forward to seeing you on the channel again very soon.